These tents you see here, meant to hold the children Trump has separated from their fathers and mothers, stand as today's American reality. Not a welcome mat, but a mat to lie on. Trump put up these tents. President Trump built the, what Senator Tim Kaine has just christened the new Trump hotels. Look at them. Just as one president is permanently known for Hoovervilles, look at those shacks, the shack cities for victims of the Great Depression. This president is today the proprietor, the proprietor of the new Trumpville, packed with the kids we've torn from their parents. Good evening. I'm Chris Matthews down in Washington. President Trump and his administration have been overwhelmed by the growing public outcry over the new tent cities and the zero tolerance policy behind them. The president just left the Capitol tonight after meeting with Congressional House Republicans to try and figure out some way out of this crisis that he has manufactured. The Atlantic has reported on the issue of family separations. The president said, quote, this is a dangerous issue. The images are bad for us. Well, the reporter added that the conference on immigration policy included very little talk of actual immigration. Unable to stem the tide of criticism, many of Trump's aides have now embarked on an aggressive PR campaign to blame the Congress. But the president has the power to fix this in the sense that we're only simply enforcing the law. Like so the why not stop it? Because, because the president the could put law, a pause on the, this while Congress figures second, out a solution. Why doesn't he do if, that? If no, no, I'm we would, curious. We, we have made to put a pause on if Congress gave us actually the tools to adjudicate it. But does President Donald Trump really want to make the argument that the buck does not stop with him? Well, no, the buck stops with the people who make the laws in this country. And well, the president seems defiant and unrepentant amid the overwhelming backlash, punched back early today. Deviating from prepared remarks, the president delivered a campaign-style speech. People that come in violate the law. They endanger their children in the process. And frankly, they endanger all of our children. When you prosecute the parents for coming in illegally, which should happen, you have to take the children away. According to the Washington Post now, the president sees immigration as a winning issue for him politically, a winning issue, complaining repeatedly in recent months that he looks weak on border enforcement and has been concerned that his base could turn on him for not being tougher. West Wing sources now tell Axios that President Trump, quote, has shown little indication that he'll climb down from the zero tolerance border policy. Well, the conservative editorial board of The Wall Street Journal warned, however, that this type of self-destructive politics has been a study in confusion. It adds that if Mr. Trump wants to lose the House and risk impeachment, he'll take Mr. Bannon's bad advice and keep giving Democrats a daily picture of children stripped from their parents. For more, I'm joined by Joy Ainsley, national security and justice reporter for NBC News, and Jonathan Swan, national political reporter for Axios. Jonathan, you're sitting right here. I want to ask you, is the president going to switch or is he going to fight? Is he going to keep up this fight or climb down from that wall? That's the question I've been asking West Wing officials all week. Um, I have got no evidence that he is ready to flip this policy, to make a unilateral, unilateral action to flip this policy. But he's definitely feeling the pressure. He's definitely feeling the pressure. And that House conference meeting that he just attended, you know, that uh, Elena Plot from The Atlantic reported on, he made clear in that meeting that the images are bad and that this is a bad issue and it needs to be fixed. The real question is, is he going to do it unilaterally? Is he going to tell Jeff Sessions to flip the policy? That would be a major climb down. Yeah. Trump would see that as a huge loss. Of I want to go. That, that kid in the red, though, I think is going to grab a lot of hearts in this country. I've been looking at pictures of him. There's another one. These young kids. Let me go to Julia. In this. You know, it's a standing situation when the first lady of the United States seems, that's the picture, seems to be challenging the president. What, what, what gives? And, and, and Rosalind Carter as well, and Laura Bush, and all these, I get this, that they're speaking more for the country than Trump is, my hunch. Right, well, it's interesting that they, that it's first ladies who are coming out, right? They're supposed to be showing the sympathetic side of America's moral character. And this is something that a lot of people think is in jeopardy right now as the Trump administration pursues this, but apparently, and as Jonathan points out, that hasn't quite gotten through to the president, at least not to the point that he wants to change this policy. And instead, what this administration has done is they have doubled down on talking points. We had another press call today with all of the reporters covering this and DHS and the Health and Human Services, and they keep just trying to tell us that if we could just report this story accurately, 
everyone would understand it from their side. They'd be sympathetic toward the government. But the fact of the matter is, Chris, a lot of the pictures that are being shown are actually provided to journalists from the government. They're not letting us into a lot of these facilities, and so we're going on their pictures. So for the president to say we're cherry-picking, for Secretary Nielsen to say that we are reporting false news and that these children are just being treated absolutely wonderfully, that is inaccurate. We, we are reporting a lot of what they are giving us here. Well, let's look at this. Throughout the campaign, Donald Trump, candidate Trump, vowed to create deportation forces to help cut down on illegal immigration. Let's watch what he said in the campaign. You're going to have a deportation force, and you're going to do it humanely. We're going to triple the number of ICE deportation officers. We take anybody. Come on in, anybody. Just come on in. Not anymore. Remember, under a Trump administration, it's called America first. To choose immigrants based on merit, merit, skill, and proficiency. Doesn't that sound nice? Our message to the world will be this. You cannot obtain legal status or become a citizen of the United States by illegally entering our country. Can't do it. Let's get down to the reality. These are asylum seekers. They're not people, poor people from Mexico. They're generally coming from Latin America, from horrible government standards, uh, horrible countries right at this point in terms of violence. They've come asking for some. Isn't there a way, I hate to be suggest you actually can get a way on this. Why don't we have faster uh, processing? Why aren't people judged whether they have a right to asylum or not in a faster way so they don't run up against these 20-day limits? Well, there are proposals to try and remedy that. I don't know whether they would be effective or not. Obviously, there's also a question of resources and yeah. issues like that. But this is, again, this is a very clear policy decision to enforce the law for every single person who comes across the border illegally, which is itself uh, sucks up a whole lot of resources and, again, is itself very clearly an administrative decision, despite what the administration Julia, says. when they come across, I think they can establish what country they're coming from. And if they come from one of the Latin American, Central American countries, which have had these horrible situations and violent situations down there, uh, they, they should be in a different category than just the person just getting across the border from Mexico who's poor and wants a better life here. They are in that particular category of asylum seekers. Why are they putting them in jail? Well, at this point, just because you are um, have been persecuted, have been hurt from a gang or domestic violence under the attorney general's new standards, that doesn't qualify you for asylum. And to the president's point about crossing illegally, it doesn't matter if you're claiming asylum if you are crossing what he would say is illegally, and that means between the ports of entry. But what's really interesting about all that is that when he talks about surging resources and tripling the number of enforcement officers from ICE, he doesn't mention sending more asylum officers. We don't know what happened to the surge in judges he wanted to bring, which would increase that process as you just laid out, Chris. Instead, he wants to enforce the tough parts of this system, and he yeah. wants to make it so that it is so hard to come through legally and claim asylum through the ports of entry, they were seeing immigrants be turned away. Well, it's getting hotter and hotter, this issue, and it's not going away. NBC's Joy Ainsley and Jonathan Swan of Axios. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.